Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who are labor and, and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. So the past week we saw a lot of unrest, a lot of unrest, a lot of distress in the capital city. Disquiety. And in the real sense, it was an explosion of what dwells in the depths of the human heart. That sense of wanting that inner peace that we so desire, but more so recognizing that without justice, there is no peace. And so unrest will always continue unless we seek search deeply in our hearts to find the peace that can come only from Christ. The first reading invites us to see Jesus or the prophet, the prophet Zephaniah, Zachariah, talks about the one who comes riding on the donkey. This reading is usually read for Palm Sunday. And the image of the donkey is not an image of war, but an image of peace. It's not an image of destruction. It's not an image of power and domination, but an image of peace. When kings go to, for war, they would usually ride on horses. But when they come back, they come back on donkeys as they celebrate the peace that they have that they have, have brought. And so for us today, we have, to under, we, we have to grapple with what it means to seek and to find that peace. Is it to be found in more power, more domination, more guns, more ammunition, more military artillery? Or, or is it to be found in the ways in which we come to terms with who we are in the depths of our heart. And so it's a real, it calls us to a real introspection and reflection as to where we find the peace. Peace is not out there. Very often we think peace is out there. Peace is not out there. Peace is in our heart. Peace is in our heart. And if you are a person of peace, then your peace will rest upon you, will stay within you. Your peace will be with you. And that's important for us. To recognize that the depth of our peace comes from the way in which we allow ourselves to experience that, that encounter with Christ that brings us to a place where we can find and we can find our deepest contentment, fulfillment, and happiness. And when there are things that may disturb our peace, such as injustice, in all its forms, 
in all its expression and in, and in all the ways in which it may show itself, racial, social, gender, and otherwise, then ours is to respond. Because that is what the kingdom of God is about. The reign of God is the kingdom, the reign, that God's reign is, is ushered in when every act of injustice is brought down. When there is right relationship between human beings, that's what justice is about. And when every human person is able to get what is his or her view, that's justice. And without justice, there can be no real peace. Without justice, there can be no real peace. And so Jesus comes riding in, or the, the story of the prophet Zechariah has the, the Messiah riding in into Jerusalem. And, and, and the text says that, that he will banish the chariots from Ephraim, the horses from Jerusalem, the bow of war will be banished. Those are instruments, chariots and horses and, 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 and weaponry are all instruments of war. He will banish those because he comes as the Prince of Peace. And he will proclaim peace to the nations. My dear friends, more than, any, more than ever, we need once again to hear a proclamation of peace to our nation. That our hearts might, might be still, that our hearts might find itself not anxious, not worried, but finding that depth and that, that depth of contentment and fulfillment. And in the gospel today, you know, Jesus says, come to me. He, he, Jesus makes an invitation to us. He says, come to me, all who are la who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. So for our unrest, the Lord will give us rest. For our distress, the Lord will give us rest. He will give us peace. But we have to first recognize from when, from where is the source of our peace? Because he invites us. In the first reading, he comes to us. And in the gospel, he invites us to come to him. So that we might be able to receive the peace that all of us, all of us, are seeking. The Lord invites us, he says, I'm strange. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me. Now a yoke is an instrument of oppression. Eh? When you have a yoke uh, on, on cattle or a bison or whatever, that's an instrument of it's, 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 it's an instrument of oppression. And so the prophet will talk about breaking the yoke of bondage. And here Jesus changes it. He changes it and says, shoulder my yoke which is not an instrument of burden and oppression and domination, but one in which once we take him upon our, in our hearts and upon our lives, we will find that rest. We will find that peace. Why? Because the text, Jesus says, because I am gentle and humble of heart. I am gentle and humble of heart. The more we respond to violence with violence, the more violence breeds violence. And so for us as Christians, we have a different logic. It may seem foolish. It may seem illogical. It may seem senseless. But the logic of Christ that we have is a logic of love. Yes, we see justice always. But the logic 
is one in which Jesus invites us. He invites us to recognize the importance of learning from him, taking from him who he is, his gentleness and his humility. His gentleness and, and his humility. He says, you'll find rest for your soul. Jesus plays on that term you. Because we have to give up our burdens that we are carrying and take upon ourselves his burden. And what is Jesus' burden? Nothing less than the cross. The cross is what he invites us to carry. If you want to be a disciple of mine, you must take up your cross every day and follow me. And the cross is our you. It's our yoke, but it's a yoke that brings liberation. It's a, yoke, a yoke that brings reconciliation. It's a yoke that brings freedom. It's a yoke that brings peace. And, and that's why Jesus says, shoulder my yoke. Just as I have shouldered the yoke of the cross, shoulder my yoke and learn from me. Learn humility in the midst of in the midst of being scourged and, 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 and beaten and killed. Learn humility. Learn what it entails to experience that deep peace. Peace of heart and peace of mind. It is not an easy thing to maintain that state of peace. But sometimes we now have a nice session in prayer and you say, okay, good. And as you walk outside, after that nice session in prayer, deep reflection, deep meditation, and, and as you walk outside, you see some, um, some zombie come to molest the spirit. <laughs> Is that the zombie, human zombie, yeah? <laughs> yeah? Come to molest the spirit and rob you of your peace. And so the peace, yeah, we get it, and as soon as it is there, it evades us again. And so that's why every day we have to return. Come, come. Every day we have to return to that center. Every day we have to return to Christ. Every day we have to come back to Him. That source, that anchor, that will anchor us and give us peace in the midst of all that we are going through. In the midst of suffering. In the midst of, of sickness. In the midst of, of, of cancer and death. In the midst of everything that we may be going through. The anxiety of losing jobs. The anxiety of not knowing what is going to happen tomorrow. The anxiety of the unrest in this land. We have to return daily. Come to me. Come to me and I will give you rest. We have to return daily so that our souls might find itself in, in Christ. And when we are in Christ, we can experience peace in the midst of the storm. In the midst of the storms of life, we can experience peace because peace is not the absence of war. Peace is the gift that comes from God. The gift that comes from God. And so we can be in the midst of the storm like Jesus. We heard a couple of weeks ago, Jesus, Jesus is on the boat and the storm comes up. And in the midst of the storm, Jesus is sleeping at peace. And everybody panicking. Everybody panicking. Master, you not, do, do you not care that you're going down? You just relax yourself and wait, 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 wait. Yeah, drama team, relax yourself. Huh? Wait, 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 why are you getting on like that? Unless we come to the Lord and connect with Him daily, daily, we return to a center, we return to an anchor, something that will anchor us, something that will keep us grounded, something that will keep us connected to the source of peace and to the source of, of happiness, to the source of contentment, and to the source of joy, then we may have that peace, but then it will be, it will be taken from us. It will be taken from us. And so, my dear friends, let our hearts truly sink 
into the way of the Lord. In the midst of everything that is going on, in the midst of all that is taking place, very often you have very little control over what is happening. Not so? You have very little control, but yet it impacts upon you. It impacts upon your mind, it impacts upon, upon how you think, because you're constantly being stimulated by, by, by all kinds of, of news media that, that is bringing things that will cause you to become anxious. And that is the life we live in today, states every day. As you, as you listen to one news clip before that is finished, another story takes and dominates, and another story takes and dominates. And that is why our souls are ever pulled, pulled from its center. And so we are invited in a special way to root ourselves in Christ and to have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in us. And Paul, speaking to the Roman, says, don't you know that the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you? And that Spirit will raise up your mortal body to new life. It is this connection with Christ, the Anointed One, that enables us to have not only that peace, but also that hope. And therefore, we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. That is important. We have nothing to fear. And when we recognize that, then we can walk triumphantly to our God. We can walk triumphantly to our God. You know, one of the things with our sister Carol was her deep faith in, in God. In the midst of all that she was going through in her chemo, and she had a deep faith and that faith allowed her to have a deep peace in God. And you would never know that she was sick because she was always still very much uh, a tough dresser. <laughs> huh? And once she had it within her, she would always get mad. And never one day did I ever hear her complain. I never said, I'm not really probably complain to her family, but I never heard her complain. She never complained. But she took all that she had to the Lord. And there is where she found her peace. Her faith was deeply rooted in the person of Christ Jesus. She believed with all of her breath in the person of Christ Jesus. And because of her own connection with Christ, she was able to walk triumphantly, even in the midst of the storm of cancer. She walked triumphantly because she knew that the Spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is that same spirit that lives in her and that will raise up her mortal body on the day of resurrection. She had nothing to fear. And we too must not be afraid. But reconnect with our God so that we may be able to still the anxieties of life. But life will beat us, life will batter us, life will come at us hard, relentless. Life does not, life has, does not respect any human being. It will come at you. Life is life. And once we have breath, life is going to come at us hard. 
But then we know who is the author of life. Christ Jesus. My dear friends, as the Prince of Peace comes to us today, he invites us to come to him. Shoulder his rope, which is the cross, and lay your burden upon his shoulder daily, so that you may experience nothing less than the peace of Christ that surpasses every understanding. The peace of Christ that lives in you and lives in me. It is this peace that we invoke upon Trinidad and Tobago, that this nation would be a nation of peace, a nation that will know peace, that will know love, and that will know forgiveness.